rise of kingdoms is over six years old now and i've been making youtube videos for the game for the past like five maybe four and a half five years i've lost track at this point and my job as a content creator for this game is to sort of answer the questions that players in the community have with regards to the meta or with how certain mechanics work or what investments they should be making but if you go to youtube and you type in is rise of kingdoms one of the number one questions that comes up here is is rise of kingdoms good is rise of kingdoms worth playing and is it worth playing now in 2024 so in this video we're going to be answering the question is rise of kingdoms worth playing in 2024 and yes we will touch on the fourth question here as well is rise of kingdoms pay to win but first what's going on guys cheers now first of all you might be looking at how long this video is and saying wow that is just too long to answer a simple question and first of all there's going to be chapters so use the chapters if you want to jump to a specific section but for those of you that are looking for a simple answer the answer is yes okay this should come as no surprise because my anniversary for rise of kingdoms is october 25th so i personally am coming up on my sixth year anniversary playing this game and it, you don't play a game for six years if you don't think that it is worth playing and also i mean it's no secret i am a partner creator with rise of kingdoms they literally sponsor videos on the channel including this one so yes i think rise of kingdoms is worth playing but now let's go over the details just a little bit okay because if you are a brand new player coming into rise of kingdoms there are a couple of things that you might want to consider and know before you jump in first of all you have to ask yourself a very simple question do you like city builder mmo games right because that is effectively what rise of kingdoms is with a very large end game PVP component. The early game is all about building up your city, progressing your city hall level to level 25, unlocking higher tiers of units all the way up to tier five troops, progressing through the technology in the academy here, and hopefully doing all of that in a kingdom that you enjoy with players that you like to play with. That's where the MMO part comes in, the massively multiplayer online component. So if you like all of those things, city builders, MMO, PVP combat, then yes, I do think Rise of kingdoms is worth playing for you because it is one of the most established if not the most established city builder mmo strategy game on mobile right now and it has been for like six years and that brings me to my second point okay this game is six years old and even still to this day we are getting new events we are getting revamped graphics we are getting reworks of old events new commanders new kvk stories and usually an update comes out at least once every single month so the developers are actively supporting this game still six years into its life cycle and there's literally no signs of them slowing down support for this game over the years on YouTube I have seen other city builder games come and go some of them are a spark in the pan some of them last a little bit longer and some of them I have literally seen launch and already ended service the games are just literally gone now which is a bummer but the foundation for rise of kingdoms is super strong six years in and the fact that we're still getting monthly updates is incredible and i feel like if i were a new player i would find a lot of confidence in that knowing that the developers are still supporting this game and keeping it thriving six years in but you don't have to just take my word for it you can literally just look on google trends to see the performance of rise of kingdoms as a game and its relative popularity compared to other games in the genre so here we can see over the past three years this is from october 15th 2021 to today which is October 15th 2024 you can see in blue that rise of kingdoms has been the most popular game in this genre consistently the whole time even when Farlight games which is basically a sister studio to rise of kingdoms released sort of a competitor in call of dragons the initial spike of call of dragons was close to the popularity of just an everyday regular day for rise of kingdoms and you can see other noteworthy competitors here like well in the yellow you can see age of empires mobile which is launching in a couple of days so maybe this isn't a perfect comparison but you can see down here the relative search volumes and in green you can see lords mobile which has been around for a very long time in fact and does maintain a healthy player base but is consistently searched less frequently than rise of kingdoms only being more popular way back at like the end of 2021 and ever since rise of kingdoms popped off it has consistently been 
more popular and then finally we have grand cross age of titans which was an entrant into the genre last year which had a ton of promise and i liked the game a lot but the game just died immediately it's actually quite disappointing because there was a lot of great features there but it just couldn't compete and so over the past three years rise of kingdoms has consistently been sort of the industry leader the market leader for these types of mobile games and i think that that matters a lot right especially when we're talking about an mmo game this isn't just a single player experience this is an mmo and the more people that are playing a game the more rewarding you feel like your achievements actually are because there's more people who can witness that achievement and the progress that you've made on your account i have all of these different commanders expertise brought to max level and i have a ton of different gear and equipment on them and if i did all of that in a game that was dead I would feel like it wouldn't really matter that much right and so when you're trying to decide you know if you're going to jump into a city builder game today on mobile your achievements in rise of kingdoms are going to be seen by more players than in almost any other mobile game of the same genre right now and i feel like it kind of has that snowball effect right if you've ever played a world of warcraft you'll know that world of warcraft was the most popular mmo rpg of all time and to my knowledge it may still be i don't really keep track of that anymore but I feel like the fact that it was the most popular brought a lot of people to it which continued to keep it the most popular and even during rough times you still find lots of players enjoying that game more so than other MMORPGs I think MMORPGs right now as a genre is not doing too hot and yet even still when people jump into one it's one of the bigger ones because player base matters and that is what Rise of Kingdoms has still to this day six years in now the fourth thing that i want to touch on here is actually that right now might be arguably the best time in the past few years to jump into rise of kingdoms for the first time for two main reasons and the first one being the remastered graphics that the developers first revealed last year i've made multiple videos in the past covering the new remastered graphics and if you guys are curious to know more about what those look like i'm not going to go fully in depth here because honestly i don't think any of the designs for the new graphics are finalized anyway but as you can see here i do go over them a little bit in this video and i basically touch on all the different ways that the graphics have been updated and improved with this remaster okay and a lot of the back end stuff from my understanding is getting a serious overhaul to make sure that the game still runs as smooth if not smoother than it ever has in terms of frame rates and performance even on older devices the developers are putting so much time effort and resources into making this game look as beautiful as possible and making it look even more incredible than it ever has before and I'm sure many players who have never jumped into rise of kingdoms before are going to see these new graphics and see how great the game looks and jump in and give it a try for the first time additionally players who stopped playing a few years ago might remember rise of kingdoms and say wow it actually looks way different it looks way better now let me jump back in and give the game another try and so if you started playing today you're gonna get a head start on all of those players that are going to be flowing into the game but on top of that okay we know that a new civilization is coming within the next couple of months in rise of kingdoms the developers have confirmed this the last that we have heard it should be coming early in 2025 so hopefully within the first quarter and usually with the launch of a new civilization rise of kingdoms has a massive influx of players there's typically a large marketing push behind the game that gets a lot of new eyeballs on the game a lot of people seeing and hearing about the game for the first time and jumping in specifically for that I remember when the Viking civilization first came around the marketing for that was insane the CGI the animated videos that they made for that were insane and the same thing was true last year with ancient Greece and the year before it with Egypt okay so we know this is a consistent trend that I have seen for years now when a new civilization comes into the game tons of new players join the game as well and so again if you started playing right now you are going to get a head start on all those new players that might be coming into the game in December January February and those two massive updates combined I think are going to put rise of kingdoms in the best position that it has ever been in over the past couple of years so if you start today you're going to get to play rise of kingdoms pretty much in its best form man looking at those remastered graphics and then coming back to this I just I, I miss it so much I got to play it in that uh, pioneer kvk and I just I want the remastered graphics back so bad oh my god I can't wait now one thing that 
a lot of players are concerned about when they're looking at a six-year-old game is is it too late to start playing rise of kingdoms right like it's it's six years old am i going to be six years behind other people and that is a valid concern but the short answer is not really because as a new player when you first download the game you're going to be dropped in the newest server that just got launched for rise of kingdoms and by the way rise of kingdoms is releasing new servers every like one and a half to three days something like that like they put out new servers like crazy the way that matchmaking works for rise of kingdoms is that for the first like three kvks or more you are going to be matched with other players that are in a similar timeline as you so all the players that you're going to be playing with and all the players that you're going to be playing against for the first like seven to nine months of your rise of kingdoms experience are going to be players that are new to the game just like you and there might be a couple of small exceptions if some players are able to weasel their way into a you know a, a migration back to a newer server something like that but for the most part the developers have been sort of combating that over the years and that's a topic for a whole nother video some people are very happy about that some players are not so happy about that but it's good for new players that is 100 certain and so as a new player you're going to be introduced slowly to more and more commanders and more and more mechanics and systems in the game so that way you can understand the game better and you're not playing and going up against players who've been playing for six years like myself so you're going to start the game and have access to commanders like Mehmed like Cao Cao and then slowly you'll get commanders that come out on the Wheel of Fortune such as Richard or commanders such as YSG that is Yi Song Ye by the way if you're new here and then you'll move on to season too and you're going to get access to commanders like alexander the great and saladin and constantine right and then eventually you'll hit kvk3 and you'll get access to all these brand new commanders and the game sort of slowly feeds these to you and continues to pair you up with other players in a similar power bracket now once you reach the end game that's called season of conquest okay so there's season one two three then season of conquest is the end game and you just play different stories and different game modes in season of conquest and in season of conquest when you do finally reach there i would say around kvk well kvk4 is your first season of conquest but i would say really around kvk5 is when you start to feel like you might be getting matched up with players who've been playing the game for a bit longer and in the end game i would say that there's definitely an argument to be made that there are some optimizations that the developers need to do to make it a little bit more fair for some of the newer players versus the older players but over the last year the developers have at least acknowledged this and it is a focus of theirs to continue to make this better they've talked about different things that they're planning on introducing like perhaps maybe a one-time commander refund for new players who first enter into season three or season of conquest and they've also already done things to help make this better like fine-tuning matchmaking and like I said earlier preventing those older players from migrating into newer kingdoms to crush the new players that they have an unfair advantage over so yes in the end game when you finally do get there I would say there are some optimizations that the devs need to do but again they've already acknowledged this and they are constantly working on that now the sixth thing that I want to touch on here is pay to win okay this was one of the most asked questions on YouTube and I think one of the components that people think of when and they ask themselves is rise of kingdoms worth playing part of them might be thinking like is this a pay to win game that i can't afford to play or that is inaccessible to me or that won't be fun for me unless i'm spending money and look we are in the shop right now in rise of kingdoms and it is a free to play mobile game and so it follows a similar monetization strategy as other i mean it's 2024 it follows a similar monetization strategy as like a majority of games these days but you truly don't have to spend money to enjoy rise of kingdoms and I really do mean that and that's coming from somebody I've spent five figures on the game so I've I know that side of the game very well but as a content creator I see people literally thousands of people over the years have commented on my videos that are purely free to play who genuinely have enjoyed the game for free for years and why is that why is it the case that in a game that has a similar monetization strategy to pretty much every other you know city builder game on the market why is it that in rise of kingdoms you can still have fun as a free-to-play player and the answer lies in what i mentioned before about the community rise of kingdoms is yes it's a pvp game but it is a community pvp game it is not you the player against another single player you will never do 1v1s in rise of kingdoms unless you go out of your way to organize that sort of battle and a majority of what you will be 
be doing is fighting in kvk alongside other players and if that's not for you you can also play in arc of osiris which is a one hour game mode that happens every other week that members of your alliance can plan for and you can build a strategy around and some players literally like this is the reason that they play rise of kingdoms they love this game mode for others like myself it's kvk but regardless the fun in rise of kingdoms comes from the team based oriented game modes here and so when you understand that then you understand that a single well pay to win player can't take down an entire kingdom's worth of players and alliances that are all working together and so even if you're a free to play player or somebody who just spends a little bit of money on the game or a mega whale you can contribute whatever you can contribute to your kingdom and even free to play players can have an impact on their kingdom by helping manage alliances and by giving other players advice on how they should build their accounts if they're super knowledgeable about the game or by sending their armies out into the open field to provide field support or to send their troops to a rally or garrison in kvk or in arc of osiris to support those other players who maybe have been playing for longer and have collected more troops and better commanders and better gear and better armaments you can still support them as a free to play player and you can still contribute to that team aspect of kvk and arc of osiris so look are you going to be the strongest most powerful player in rise of kingdoms free to play no the the answer is no okay but you don't have to be i'm not i'm not trying to be that right that's not the right way to look at this game okay it is not a single player game this is an mmo game all the fun comes from playing with other people that you like to play with and yes you can have fun doing that as free to play and that brings me to my final point about whether or not it is worth playing rise of kingdoms in 2024 and that is simply that it is fun this is one of the things that you know if you're if you're looking up a video is a game worth playing whether it's rise of kingdoms or any other game if you're typing that into YouTube then you're going into the game with the mindset of min maxing and performing as best as you can and trying to be tuned in with the meta and all those things are good and that's why I made this YouTube channel to begin with I'm not saying that's bad but the fundamental component that you need to remember is that rise of kingdoms is a video game and video games are supposed to be fun and I gotta say honestly for me playing in kvk those exhilarating moments seeing the massive i mean bro seeing jeffy defend this flag in king's land last kvk the massive open field wars in rise of kingdoms truly i've not experienced anything like it in any other game and when i was younger i lived in the middle of nowhere and so it was very expensive to get good internet and might we just my family didn't do that there was other bills that we had to pay and so I never got to play World of Warcraft back in the day okay out of any game that I've ever seen other people talk about passionately it sounds like early World of Warcraft like vanilla World of Warcraft or Burning Crusade or Wrath like people talk about those expansions passionately because doing raids back in the day sounds like it was a lot of work but it felt really rewarding because you had a lot of players working on a team together and that's the only other game that I've heard people talk about with as much passion as I feel for rise of kingdoms when I have things like this happen right the enemy sending 23 and a half million troops at our 9.6 million troops and pulling out a massive victory like this again I've just never felt this much exhilaration and excitement in any other PvP game so at the end of the day rise of kingdoms is worth playing because it is fun and it provides an experience at least for me that I have not experienced in any other game of any other genre during massive KVK Wars I'll be up until midnight and then I'll wake up again at like 5 30 in the morning after five hours of sleep just to jump back on the game and see how things are unfolding and see what's what's happening right and waking up early to play a video game and being excited about doing it that's not something that I've experienced since I was a kid right with like Pokemon red version of like putting the Game Boy under my pillow type of thing so for me I find rise of kingdoms super fun and for that reason as a video game yes I do think it is worth playing in 2024 but I want to know what you think what do you guys think about rise of kingdoms in 2024 is it still worth playing let me know in the comments section below and while you're down there drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out to the YouTube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time I upload a rise of kingdoms video with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace